Jesus has invited us to a wedding. Who will come? Jesus has invited us to dance, to sing, to celebrate. Who will come? We will come. Jesus has invited us to a great feast with good food and great wine. Who will come? We will come. Jesus has invited us to receive life, abundant life. Who will come? We will come. Good morning. Good morning. And welcome to worship on this second Sunday after Epiphany. I want to welcome all that are worshiping with us today, especially those that are visiting. Please know that it's our hope at American Lutheran that you feel at home in our time of worship and fellowship. Today we will celebrate the sacrament of Holy Communion and all are welcome to come to the table. No matter where you are in your faith journey, come and share in God's gift of bread and wine, the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. Today we'll be serving communion at four stations by intinction. That's the dipping of the bread into the wine and again, all are welcome to the table. There's Sunday school today and we're asking our youth right after our time of worship to go to the fellowship hall for a snack and some conversation. And then it's down to the choir room. And the rest of us were invited also to the fellowship hall for a time of food and fellowship. And we hope that all will stay. We ask that you please keep the following in your prayers this week. Belva Stinson, Deb Pauley, Cody Seehofer, Dorothy Prendergast, Cheryl Pauley, Sharon Chapman, Wade Frosch. We ask that you keep Glenda Bowen in your prayers as she goes in for surgery this week. And also, uh, we ask that you keep uh, Alan Schmidt's family in your prayers. Alan Schmidt passed away on Wednesday uh, out in uh, Longmount, uh, Colorado. And just keep he and his, our, his family in their prayers. We ask that you also pray for the ministry and mission at St. Lawrence Catholic Church this month. They're the church that we're praying for. I want to thank all those who are helping us out in worship. We thank our acolyte, Elizabeth Smith. We thank our lector, Kay O'Farrell. And Miriam, we thank you for your gift of music. Just a few announcements. Star Wars Family Fun Night is coming up, and the date is the 30th of uh, this month, and it's a family fun night. And we are all family, so I'm hoping that every single one of us will dress up in our favorite uh, Star Wars co costume. Dave, you've got yours ready. <laughs> and. Uh, We'll all be there and uh, having a lot of fun, and that's on the 30th. And if you uh, want to sign up, there's, the sheet is in the narthex, and there's a, many other uh, items to sign up for in the narthex as well. Next week is our annual meeting, and uh, we'll have that meeting right after church next week, uh, right after our worship service. And then we'll also next week be celebrating our, our uh, association with Nisadak and Lutheran Outdoors, and that'll all take place right here. We're also having our pancake breakfast next week, so come hungry, stay uh, for the meeting, stay for the pancake uh, feast. Are there any other announcements today? If not, we ask that you please stand for the confession and forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity. One God who creates us and forms us, who redeems us and calls us, who unites us and sends us. Amen. Gathered in God's presence, let us confess our sin. Mighty and loving God, we confess that we are capped to sin and cannot free ourselves. We seek our own way. We divide the body of Christ. In your mercy, cleanse us and heal us. Let the words of our mouths, the thoughts of our hearts, and everything we do be filled with faith, hope, and love. Amen. Hear the voice of Jesus. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me to proclaim release to the captives. In the name of Jesus Christ, I proclaim to you that your sins are forgiven and you are released. The joy of the Lord is your strength, and the gift of the Holy Spirit are yours forever. Amen. When morning gilds the sky, my heart awake, cries, may Jesus 
of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. source of every blessing, you showed forth your glory and led many to faith by the works of your Son, who brought gladness and salvation to his people. Transform us by the spirit of his love, that we may find our life together in him, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Please be seated. For Zion's sake, I will not keep silent, and for Jerusalem's sake, I will not rest, until her vindication shines out like the dawn, and her salvation like a burning torch. The nations shall see your vindication, and all the kings your glory, and you shall be called by a new name that the mouth of the Lord will give. You shall be a crown of beauty in the hand of the Lord, and a royal diadem in the hand of your God. You shall no more be termed forsaken, and your land shall no more be termed desolate, 
but you shall be called my delight is in her, and your land married. For the Lord delights in you, and your land shall be married. For as a young man marries a young woman, so shall your builder marry you. And as the bridegroom rejoice, rejoices over the bride, so shall your God rejoice over you. Word of God, word of life. Be to God. We will read Psalm 36 responsively by full verse. Your love, O Lord, reaches to the heavens and your faithfulness to the clouds. Your righteousness is like the strong mountains, your justice like the great deep. You save humankind and animals, O Lord. How priceless is your love, O God. All people take refuge under the shadow of your wings. They feast upon the abundance of your house. You give them drink from the river of your delights. For with you is the well of life, and your light we see light. Continue your loving kindness to those who know you, and your favor to those who are true of heart. A reading from the Apostle Paul's first letter to the Corinthians, the 12th chapter. Now concerning spiritual gifts, brothers and sisters, I do not want you to be uninformed. You know that when you were pagans, you were enticed and led astray to idols that could not speak. Therefore, I want you to understand that no one speaking by the Spirit of God ever says, let Jesus be cursed, and no one can say Jesus is Lord except by the Holy Spirit. Now there are varieties of gifts, but the same Spirit, and there are varieties of services, but the same Lord, and there are varieties of activities, but it is the same God who activates all of them in everyone. To each is given the manifestation of the Spirit for the common good. To one is given through the Spirit the utterance of wisdom, and to another the utterance of knowledge according to the same Spirit. To another, faith by the same Spirit. To another, gifts of healing by the one Spirit. To another, the working of miracles. To another, prophecy. To another, the discernment of spirits. To another, various kinds of tongues. To another, the interpretation of tongues. All these are activated by one and the same Spirit who allots to each one individually just as the Spirit chooses. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia, Gospel according to John, the second chapter. On the third day, there was a wedding in Cana in Galilee, and the mother of Jesus was there. Jesus and his disciples had also been invited to the wedding. When the wine gave out, the mother of Jesus said to him, They have no wine. And Jesus said to her, Woman, what concern is that to you or to me? My hour has not yet come. His mother said to the servants, do whatever he tells you. Now standing there were six stone water jars for the Jewish rite of purification, each holding 20 to 30 gallons. Jesus said to the servants, fill the jars with water, and they filled them up to the brim. Jesus said to the servants, now draw some out and take it to the chief steward. So they took it. And when the steward tasted the, wine that had, the water that had become wine, and did not know where it came from, though the servants who had drawn the water knew. The steward called the bridegroom and said to him, Everyone serves the good wine first, and then the inferior wine after the guests have become drunk. But you have kept the good wine until now. Jesus did this, the first of his signs in Cana of Galilee, and revealed his glory, and his disciples believed in him. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. Please be seated. Your brothers and sisters in Christ, grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and Jesus Christ our Lord and Savior. Amen. It was the last hockey game of the year for the Minnesota Gophers. And for my daughter-in-law, Julia, it was her last home game. In fact, it would be her last game putting on the Gopher band uniform to play in the pep band with all of her friends. 
And because of that, she was rather melancholy. And then when my son Christian, who was dating her at the time, told her that he wasn't going to the hockey game, that last game that she would ever play in, well, her melancholy mood turned a little sour toward Christian. <laughs> but actually, this was Christian's plan. This was his plan. He was going to that hockey game, and his intention was to propose to Julie after the game was over. You see, it was a month before that Christian came up with this plan, so he called up the first seat trombone player in the Gopher pet band and told them that he wanted them to keep on playing after everything was over, after that hockey game was over. They would play the band's favorite song, Hey Baby. <laughs> Let's just sing a little chorus right now. No. <laughs> and for Christian, his proposal plan was then he would sneak over while they were playing that after the jam session was over, get down on his knees, and he would propose. Well, that was his plan. So after the he Gophers defeated the hated Badgers, the band started playing their post-game set. And that's when Christian started to make his move. After that post-game set was done and the rouser was played for one last time by that band, one of the trombone players stood up and said to the trombones and tubas, hey, let's play one more song. And they started playing Hey Baby. That's when Christian crawled over into position right next to Julia and got up on one knee. And it's at that moment that the trombone and tuba players quit playing, except for Julia, who was still playing. <laughs> and then she looked down and saw Christian with a ring in his hand, and he proposed. And she said yes, and the band started playing Hey Baby again. <laughs> you know what they say, timing is everything. Whether it's telling a joke or making a dramatic entrance into a stadium or popping the question, timing is everything. And when the timing is right, people will laugh at your joke and gasp at your entrance and smile radiantly at the proposal. But when your timing is off, more than likely they'll gasp at your joke, maybe frown at your entrance and laugh at your proposal. Yes, timing is everything. Which is what makes this wedding at Cana so improbable, so impossible. For at that wedding, the timing is way off. And it wasn't because the bride became bridezilla, or the groom spoke out of turn, or the minister mispronounced the names of the couple, or mis messed up the vows. Rather, it was all because the wine ran out. Now that shouldn't sound all that surprising, especially since John tells us it's the third day of the wedding. A lot of wine can be consumed in three days. If that particular bunch that is invited is thirsty, well, you can imagine why there is no wine. If that banquet were held here at American Lutheran, we saw that the wine was running out, one of you would have run out to the store and bought some and we would have been okay, but, this is first century Palestine. And running out of wine early wasn't just about running out of wine. It was a cultural embarrassment. It was a disaster. For wine wasn't just a social lubricant. It was much more to those first century folk. It was a sign of a successful harvest. It was a sign of God's abundant love and blessing to this couple. It was a sign of joy and gladness and hospitality for the community. And so when the wine ran out, that meant there was no blessing for the couple. Timing is everything. The wine ran out before the wedding celebration was over and there was a community catastrophe. Now to make matters worse, Jesus' mother doesn't seem to have much of a sense of timing either. The wine runs out and she lets everybody know. 
They have no wine, Mary spouts out. Now, we don't know if Mary was a close family member to either the bride or the groom and just wanted to help out, or maybe she was one of those people that she saw a disaster happening, and so she came to step forward and take care of the problem. All that we do know is that Mary expects her son to fix it. But Jesus doesn't think it's a very good idea. He thinks it's bad timing. Woman, he says to his mother, what concern is it to you or to me? My hour hasn't come. It's not my time, Mom. Can you hear him saying that? But like most mothers, his mother knew best. So rather than scolding Jesus for his tone of voice that he used, Mary turns to the servants and simply says, do what he tells you. Now it could be that like many mothers that know their sons, Mary knew that her son would eventually come through this and do what he's supposed to do. For we that are like son, or that are sons to our mothers, we every once in a while grumble and protest just a little bit before we do, but we always do the things for our mothers, right, Neil? Yeah. But it also could be that Mary knew how to tell time better than Jesus thought. After all, she had been a part of Jesus' life from before the very beginning. I mean, for she was visited by Gabriel, the angel, who told her all about Jesus. She was there pondering Jesus' birth with the shepherds. She was there watching Jesus as the wise men gave him his gifts. She was the one that traveled with him to Egypt and then up to Nazareth, and I'm sure there were many tears along that journey that she dried. She's the one that questioned him after his three days in the temple with the religious leaders. And she was the one that was now following him as he was doing his ministry. So perhaps we shouldn't be surprised if Mary recognized that wherever her son was on the scene, There was nothing ordinary in the time. Well, you know the rest of the Canaanite story, the Cana story. Jesus instructs the servants to fill six stone water jars to the brim to draw some water, but now just turn to wine and take it to the chief steward. And once again, we're told that the timing is kind of off. Because at most weddings, the host serves the best wine first. The guests are there. He wants to honor the guests. And then later, after their palates have been dulled by the wine, you pull out the cheap stuff. But this particular wedding host, according to the chief steward, broke tradition by serving the best wine last. For all of a sudden, this married couple has six stone water jars that holds 30 gallons 180 gallons of wine. No one's going to leave this wedding thirsty. There's abundance of wine. There is plenty of blessings to be shared. Timing is everything. But not just in this wedding story. We find the timing is right throughout the Gospel of John when it comes to Jesus. In fact, John often shares that there are two types of time that he's dealing with. One is the kind of time that we know so well. It's the one that's measured by seconds and minutes, hours, days, weeks, months, years. It's the time we spend doing our everyday living, getting ready for our work and play, spending time at home, our jobs in our churches, in our schools. It's our ordinary everyday time, and it beats on and on and on each and every day. But in John's Gospel, there's another type of time, a kingdom time, where all that is predictable fades away, and what emerges in its place is possibilities. This is God's time, and it's that which works through our ordinary tick-tock everyday time to reveal to us a glimpse of the divine. In today's Gospel, when Jesus says, my hour has not come, he's not talking about the watch time, 
He's not talking about the calendar date. Rather, he's talking about the time when God will reveal his glory through the cross, through the resurrection. And that's when God becomes accessible for all, once and for all. But in today's gospel story, that hour, that time has not yet come, Jesus says. Or has it? Let's go back to what Mary said in today's gospel. Because she seems to really know what time it is. Maybe better than anyone else in the story. For Mary seems not only to know that Jesus can do something about this disastrous loss of blessing to this marriage, married couple, but more importantly, she expects him to do something. Whatever he tells you, do it, she says to the servants. And John's gospel seems to agree with Mary. For in today's gospel, John reminds us that all of this took place on the third day third day. And we as Christians know the importance of the third day. That's the day we find the empty tomb. That's the day that Jesus is raised from the dead. That is resurrection day. And because of that third day resurrection, Jesus lives and is living out his promise right now in this place, in this community. Because of the third day resurrection promise, bread and wine now bear Christ's body and blood and each Sunday we take that in and a piece of Christ is within us so that we can move out in the community and be Christ to others because of the third day a welcoming handshake offered in the name of Christ can convey abundant love and blessing because of the third day a small donation of money given in the name of Christ can help move a family from poverty and scarcity to abundance Because of the third day, a simple act of kindness can make all the difference in the world for our brothers and sisters in Christ. And because of a third day, a smile, or maybe three smiles, shared at all the right time can shed light into the darkest places. You see, when Jesus is on the scene, the time is right, because God, who is acceptable, accessible to all, makes all things possible. Timing is everything. But here's the thing. You and I get so caught up in our everyday time, checking our watches, making sure that we've got enough days to get our projects done, that we forget about the third day time. And that's what this story really is all about. It's that within our daily lives, God is at work in our jobs, in our schools, in our relationships, in our family life, to care for us and redeem us, and our neighbors and all creation. So my question for you this morning is, how would it look if the ordinary mundane time of our lives was also touched by the third day time, God's time, where we work through all of our time commitments with God's presence ever before us. Because according to Mary and according to the Gospel of John and because of Jesus, whatever time we think it might be, it is always God's time. And when God is around, all things are possible. Thanks be to God. Amen. Joy and sweet, prophet, priest, and king.
Please stand. Living together in trust and hope, we confess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. <coughs> Giving thanks, thanks for God's great gifts, we pray for the church, the world, and all those in need. Dear God, you enliven your church. Inspire the body of Christ to rejoice in, and make good use of the various gifts and vocations with which you entrust each and every one of us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. You are the fountain that brings forth life. Dear God, guide us to be good stewards of all the plants and animal life entrusted to our care. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. In your light we see light. Dear God, shine on the path for all nations to seek peace, justice, and well-being for all your children. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. You are a refuge to those in peril. Dear God, grant help, healing, and wholeness to all who are in need of your care. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Dear Lord, we ask that you bless all that are part of the American Lutheran Church. Help us to use our gifts to the glory of your holy name. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. We give thanks for the faithfully departed who have joined the marriage feast that has no end. May their lives inspire us to trust always in your promise of eternal life. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Trusting your love and healing, O oh God, we commend all for whom we pray, knowing that you will hear and answer through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. Let us share the peace with one another. God's peace to you. Aaron, God's peace to you. What? 
God, as grains of wheat scattered upon the hill were gathered together to become one bread, so let your church be gathered together from the ends of the earth into your kingdom. For yours is the glory through Jesus Christ, now and forever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. Blessed are you, O holy God. You are the life and the light of all. By your powerful words, you created all things. Through the prophets, you called your people to be a light to the nations. Blessed are you for Jesus, your Son. He is your light, shining in the darkness and revealing to us your mercy and might. In the night he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took the bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples to eat, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all the drinks, saying, this cup is a new cup my blood shed for you and for all people. Do this in remembrance of me. For as often as we eat of this bread and drink from this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Come to the table. Feast on God's abundant life for you. Please be seated.
We thank you, O God, that you have fed us your, at your banquet table with bread and wine beyond compare, the very life of Christ for us. Send your spirit with us now that we may set the captives free. Use your gifts to build one another up and in everything reflect your glory revealed in Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Please stand for the blessing. God Almighty, send your light and your truth to keep you all the days of your life. The hand of God to protect you, the holy angels to accompany you, and the blessing of Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be with you now and forever. Amen. Amen. serve the Lord.